What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to be talking about Scream 7 mostly in this video here today. And I'll venture off into another topic briefly before I do a whole other video talking about that separately if I have time. But I wanted to speculate further on this Woodsboro Truther subreddit once again. Mostly revolving around again Scream 7 in this video. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but no one involved with the filmmaking process has rejected the idea that that subreddit is actively being kept live by people who may be involved with the recent Scream film or not whether that be spyglass individuals paramount i don't know but the first project x even but the first time this group popped up was during scream 6 with the richie's innocent crap when sam showed dr stone her phone so he could see the rumors about her and how richie and amber are innocent i naturally searched for that reddit to see if it was real but the more time passes I'm thinking, did they create this Reddit page for the film or did it coincidentally just benefit them in the long run? Because of course it is real. I struggle to think that it's a coincidence simply because it was purposely displayed in the movie. Now, the subreddit is mostly dedicated to exposing the truth about Sam, Chad, Mindy, Tara, and what really went on, according to these delusional people, what really went on in Woodsboro in 2022, and what really in the recent New York killings since they seem to think that Sam, Chad, Mindy, and Tara are the ones responsible for that as well, and that Gail Weathers is somehow complicit in this too, but I'll get into that. However, if it's aligned with the filmmaking process, there might be possible plot details on this subreddit that relate to Scream 7. If again, it's aligned with the filmmaking process. Two months ago, around the time that Landon was, was confirmed to be directing, a post went up stating a new stab film is coming from the Happy Death Day director. So of course, it's just in reference to Scream 7, but will Scream 7 actually have a new stab project in development that's been announced with Landon attached as a director? Another post highlights that Gail Weathers has written a new book about the New York attacks and asks if people still think Sam is guilty. The post goes on to suggest that perhaps Gail is being manipulated to lie in her books because she's scared of Sam. So again, I ask, is Scream 7 going to have a new book by Gail Weathers and will the conspiracy surrounding Sam just become even bigger due to what happened in New York? Another post suggests Jill, Richie, Charlie, the Kirsches, and Amber are innocent and were framed. My question again, if this stuff is linked to Scream 7 because of its associations with Scream 6 and if, and if people who are actively involved with the filmmaking process are the ones making these posts, Will this film dive into a conspiracy killer who is so deluded or killers that are so deluded that they take matters into their own hands in the name of justice? One user takes this game a step further and left a comment under a post saying Sunrise Studios has no interest in Stab 9 after the flop that was Stab 8 and for the backlash they've received since it's in bad taste these days. Most we will get is a true crime documentary. So again, <laughs> I ask... Will Scream 7 have a true crime documentary? Like, I just find this subreddit very fascinating after it appeared in Scream 6. And I would like to see your comments down below about this stuff. Because I noticed that some of the users, when they appear delusional in this subreddit, they participate in other subreddit, subreddit groups saying the most sane things out there. So it's like, are these people involved in the filmmaking process? That's my own conspiracy about this subreddit group, and that's all stemming from the fact that it showed up in Scream 6. Again, it's called the Woodsboro Truther, and it's very convenient if it just coincidentally aligned with what they were trying to tell in Scream 6, and they just decided to use it in their film. I, I struggle to think that it was just coincidental. I think it's all purposeful. I think that this is somehow connected to Scream 7, but if I'm wrong, I'm just wrong. But if they wanted to go around and make this relevant again in Scream 7. I would just like to see your comments about it down below. If anything, this can be added to my Christina idea that I tossed around in my last video. Two killers who hate stab want to send a message to Hollywood to pull the plug on all things Ghostface since the backlash wasn't enough, but they are also delusional conspiracy theorists who believe that the survivors are the ones that are really guilty. They think that the survivors do not deserve to live. Basically, the killers in Scream 6, you could say, unintentionally would have laid the foundation for these two nut jobs in Scream 7. Now, obviously, I'd like to still see a more sane killer pulling their strings, but it doesn't have to be Christina. It can be Leslie Mocker. It can be Tara's dad, some other newbie character, all in the name of revenge. I still think somebody should be present here 
having a revenge motive of some sorts. Not that revenge isn't present in Scream 5 because it is again present. It's just more so revenge against Hollywood. So I would like to see a more personable motive against the survivors just like how we had in Scream 6. You guys can let me know what you think about that down in the comment section below. Check out that Woodsboro Truther group. Do you think I'm tripping? Do you think it was just a coincidence? Why or why not? Let me know down below what you think about all these points that I point, pointed out and posts that I mentioned that again come strictly from that Woodsboro Truther subreddit where it's dedicated to uncovering the truth about what happened in 2022 in Woodsboro and during the New York spree that just happened in Scream 6. All fascinating stuff. But teetering off into the last thing I want to touch on here today in relation to a Poltergeist TV series that is in the works. Now, we knew that Amazon was working on something with Poltergeist. They were working on trying to revive the IP. But according to Variety, a report came out today that a series version of the iconic horror film Poltergeist is currently in early development at Amazon MGM Studios. No writer is currently attached to the project. Daryl Frank and Justin Falvey will executive produce on behalf of Amblin Television, who was involved with the original film. Uh, and we don't have any plot details at this time to share beyond the fact that the show will be set within the world of the film. Now, see, that last statement is kind of where I'm a little hopeful that it will be a direction that I would prefer to see. Could we be getting a legacy sequel show? that picks up years after Poltergeist 3 follows Carol Ann as an adult. Obviously, it won't be Heather O'Rourke, rest her soul, but it can be someone else who can fill the shoes, fill the role, bring Carol Ann back to life. We can see Carol Ann maybe with her own family. And then, of course, the same things that happened to her as a kid, it can happen to somebody else in her life, maybe her own kids or somebody else. I don't know. I think this would be the second Poltergeist show also, because I think there was a show called Poltergeist The Legacy or something like that years ago. But you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. Are you a fan of Poltergeist or not? Do you think that they could be exploring a sequel route in the form of a TV show? It like a long overdue Poltergeist, Poltergeist 4, basically, but in the form of a TV show, since they're saying it will be set within the world of the film, they could be ignoring the sequels and just doing a legacy sequel show in that capacity, but we'll see. Let me know what you think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notification. You can never miss a video in the description. I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video in the next video.